Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, I'd like to start my talk with a question for all of you. And that question is, if you had to pick a side of your brain, the left side or the right side, what would, what would you pick? If you choose left side, that means you're more logical, more analytical. And if you choose the right, then you're probably more creative. And the catch here is you don't get to abstain. So take a second to think about it, and then we'll take a vote. OK, awesome. So if you think you are more left side analytical, raise your hand. Awesome, we've got a lot of techie people here. And if you think you're more right side creative, raise your hand. Awesome. So if you chose left side, maybe you find yourself to be someone who likes instruction, direction, things to be very concrete. Maybe you enjoy math because there's only one single solution. And if you chose right side, more creative, maybe you like adventure, spontaneity. Maybe you're a little scatterbrained sometimes. Doesn't matter which one you chose, you've defined yourself as one of these two things. And we do that a lot in life, because as humans, we like definition. The unknown is scary, and so we create definitions for things. And if you were to find me on LinkedIn, or read my resume, or even the description of what my talk was about on the site for this event, you would probably guess that I'm left side analytical through and through. I studied computer science, I work in tech, I write code for my job. But what you probably wouldn't guess is that for the first 18 years of my life, I spent up to 30 hours a week looking something like this. I was a dancer. I was dead set on going to Juilliard for my higher education, becoming a professional ballerina. So you can probably tell that these two different sides of the brain didn't work so well for me since I started out like that and somehow wound up here about to tell you a lot about tech. So how did that transition happen? It started when I was in eighth grade, and I was having a conversation with my older brother. And he told me that he has a good friend he graduated school with who got a job at this company straight out of college. And eighth grade me said, wow, that is so cool. And I can't really articulate to you why. Maybe it's because I loved the technology aspect. I did enjoy using the family's home computer. Or maybe it was because they changed their search engine logo for every cool holiday. I'm not really sure. So flash forward a several years when I am set upon going to college, and I have to choose. Am I going to follow the right side of my brain, this creative ballerina Sarah, or am I going to pursue this interest in going to a school that would allow me to maybe eventually work at Google? And my parents, they don't hold college degrees. So they had endless love and support for me, regardless of what direction I went in. But they didn't really have any decision for me. They didn't care. They didn't push me in one way or the other. So I had to come up with my own process, which can only be described as systematically ridiculous. I used College Board to find what percentage of a match I would fit at different colleges. And then amongst those colleges, I split them up evenly and applied to them as one of the following three things. A computer science major, an economics major, or a dance major. And ultimately, it came down to something that I'm sure we're all too familiar with, and that's money. One school decided that my higher education was worth their investment, and so I went there. And crazily enough, that decided what I would pursue as my career path. Could have easily have been a different one of those schools that maybe chose, that maybe I had applied to as a dance major, and I could be standing up here telling you about the audition process for the New York City Ballet, or maybe I wouldn't be standing up here at all. So I hop on a plane, and I go to a city I had never visited, on a coast of the United States I had never been to, with a degree that I truly knew nothing about. And I walk into my first day of class, and I sit down excited and expectant and ready to learn about what computer science is all about. And the first thing our professor makes us do is to help him, give him the instructions to change the diaper of the baby doll that's sitting on the desk at the front of the room. That was the entire task. As a class, give him the instructions. So we try, and we inevitably fail. We drop the baby almost immediately because we forget that you have to be precise. We told him to pick up the baby, but we didn't tell him how. We told him to take off the baby's diaper, but we didn't tell him he had to keep holding on to the baby. So the baby fell. <laughs> and that was his point, that in computer science, to think like a computer scientist, you have to be precise. You have to be articulate. You have to cover every possible use case. If you're going to hold on to the baby, then the baby will be safe. If you don't say to hold on to the baby, then the baby will fall. And this concept of if-then statements is prevalent throughout computer science. But what stuck with me even more was that this whole time he was telling me to think like a computer scientist, but I still felt like I was thinking like a dancer. If my right arm is forward, then my left arm needs to be 45 degrees back. 
If my back leg is lifted and straight, then my foot needs to be pointed. It didn't seem like these two trains of thought were all that different to me. And I didn't give up on dance completely throughout college. I joined a dance company. I wound up discovering yoga. I even became a yoga instructor. But I stuck, stuck with computer science because it didn't seem foreign. It seemed like something that was achievable and doable for me. And these crossovers of thought I started to notice were more and more prevalent as I continued on in my education. There's a concept in software development called TDD. It's an acronym that stands for Test Driven Development. At a really high level, the way this works is if you have some sort of problem, before you can even write a solution for it, you first have to write a test. And the test is going to check that whatever the solution is you create in the future actually works. Once you have your test, then you want to write your solution that passes this test as easy as possible. And from there, you can refactor. You can make it better. You can add on. You can write more tests. And this keeps going around and around in a circle. You fail your test. You pass your test. You refactor. And that's essentially it. But there's also an acronym in yoga, and it's SAD, Stability, Alignment, Depth. And the way that works is as an instructor, if you have a student in your class, the first thing you want to ensure is that they're stable. They're not falling over, they're standing up, and they're safe. After they're stable and they're okay, then you can check to see that their form's correct, that they're doing the right posture, that their alignment's okay. And then from there, maybe you add something challenging, maybe you add depth to it. And when you think about yoga and computer science, you wouldn't think that there was that much of a crossover. But what if I told you that maybe there was? For example, if you take this stick figure man that's falling out of tree pose, we can apply our yoga formula to it pretty easily. First, you tell them to be stable. Just put your foot down and stand up straight so that you're not falling over anymore. Then we can check the form. OK, now try to open up your knee so that this looks more like tree pose and less like you're just standing up straight. And then add depth. Make it more challenging. Lift your arms up. Maybe blink your eyes shut. But what if we applied TDD to this instead? You have your failing test of a person in tree pose. And then you pass them the easiest way possible. Put your foot down, open up your knee, and then you refactor. You add a little bit more to it. You add the arms or the eyes, whatever it is. And the way that these both, both of these formulas work is they rely on this concept of iteration, of starting with something simple and building off of it until it works better, and that you ultimately get the result that you want. And that was just another point in time where I noticed that Maybe these two sides of our brains, they don't function all so differently. Over the summer, the past few years while I was in college, I worked with young high school women interested in computer science and cybersecurity. And we gave them a design thinking problem. And all they had to do was design a safe. So take a sticky note, write on the sticky note what you think the best safe would be, or a description of it. And we had two different answers that we got from this problem. The first was something that looked like this. It had some sort of computationally secure code, some way that it would be really hard to break into the safe. It was all based on the math, the computer science, the complexity of how you would get into the safe. But the other group of people designed something more like this. It wasn't hard to break into, but it was hard to tell that it was a safe. It was disguised or camouflaged. And both of these were independently great ideas. But what really happened was once we made them collaborate, their best solution was together they came up with an idea of a safe that looked like a refrigerator, so you didn't know it was a safe, but was also really computationally secure. And as I was developing this talk, I was telling a good friend of mine about this design thinking problem and how it was so interesting that it wasn't until we made our students collaborate with each other that we got the best solution. And he asked me if I had ever heard of the scientific research lab that exists at University of Washington. And there's a lab that deals with plant hormones and a study about them. And the lab director brought in a whole bunch of musicians and artists, painters, whatever it may be, to add a new perspective to the scientific lab, to add abstract thinking and creativity. And at the end of the lab, every person that was interviewed or reviewed the lab said it was wildly successful because they loved collaborating with someone who thought so differently, who was in a field that was so opposite of what theirs was. And it turns out there's even companies who recruit software developers based on past experience in music, stating that the developers that had this background outperformed those who didn't. So maybe these researchers and these recruiters, maybe they're onto something. Maybe they have some idea of why we don't need to divide our left and right brain so distinctly. There's a statistic that says in 2015, there were 60,000 undergraduate computer science graduates. And there were 530,000 open developer positions, which leaves 9 out of 10 unfilled. And that's projected to go up by 2020 to have 1.4 million unfilled software development jobs. 
And maybe these researchers, these recruiters have found a potential solution. Maybe if we encourage this collaboration, we won't have this problem so much. In computer science, there's this concept. It's in digital logic, and it's called exclusive OR. In real life, when we talk about making decisions, more often than not, what we actually mean is exclusive OR. And what it is is you can choose one or the other, but you can't choose both. So do you want to go to the Cheesecake Factory or Legal Seafood for dinner? You can't say, I want to go to both of those. You can only pick one. And that's what exclusive OR is. But there are some circumstances in our life where we really, really, really want to choose both, kind of like me in the left and right brain situation. So maybe instead of saying, we can't, we have to pick one, maybe we say, there's not such a divide. You can pick both. And I'm not saying to the accountant in the audience that you have to go pick up a paintbrush, or to the artist that you should start studying calculus, but to instead say to those younger than us that it's okay if you're interested in both, and that ultimately maybe that will help you be successful. So what if we just didn't have to choose? Thank you. <laughs>